Hello, everyone. You're welcome to church. Before we start the service, um, let's have a scripture reading from the book of Psalm 103, uh, from verse 1 to 5. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Let's pray. Father, we're grateful for today. Thank you for bringing us to such a time like this in your presence. As we worship you, as we rejoice, as we sing, as we praise your name, come and dwell among us. Oh, Father, Lord, let us feel your presence tangible in our midst, oh God, today. Father, we pray for the world. We pray for the earth. We pray for all the inhabitants of the earth. We ask the Lord, let your will be done even in this season that we're in, oh God. Father, as we lift your name, we ask the Lord you pull us closer today. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Now, I just want you to be ready as we praise the Lord our God.
Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Let's pray. Father, I just want to thank you for the entrance of your word. Has got the power to transform our lives. As the word comes, let it not come with enticing words of men's wisdom. Let it take the flock of God to the next level of glory and power. And let God's people say, Amen. Today, I've titled this message, Essence of Positive Thinking. Positive thinking is the capacity to meditate on the word of God without wavering so as to effect a desired productive outcome beneficial to purpose. Positive thinking is the secret of positive living. If you want to do supernatural things, anything that God does starts from the mind. The mind is what makes you great or small. Your capacity to take in the word of God and to dwell on the totality of God's word has to do with the state of your mind. Medical experts, psychologists, and many religious leaders believe that positive thinking eliminates stress, fear, depression, and enhances a person's overall spiritual, mental, and physical well-being with the ability to increase the lifespan. Fear is radically opposed to positive thinking and success. It has the power to isolate faith and frustrate godly purpose. Only the audacity of faith can silence the tyranny of fear. The Bible tells me in the book of 2 Timothy 1.7, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. If you say you're a believer, and all your actions are dictated by fear, then something is radically wrong. Because God has not given us that spirit. The spirit we, that we carry, the spirit that works in you, through you, for you, is the spirit of God. It takes us from glory to glory, from power to power, from strength to strength. Understand what the devil is trying to do. Many Christians want to justify fear. They tell you, I, 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 can't, I, can't, I can't do certain things because God is working through me. How would you know that revival is taking place? How would you know that the will of God is carried out on earth? Because the Lord's prayer is predicated on God's will. That means if you live a life that is outside the will of God, then you will not experience the things that God has ordained for you. When we say, thy kingdom come, it simply means we are declaring God's supernatural principles on the earth realm. The earth is governed by principles, not by, by constitutional doctrines or whatever you want to put in place. The most superior principles are the principles of God. Because the principles of God can take a nation from glory to glory, from strength to strength. The principles of God can turn your life upside down. The principles of God can turn your marriage upside down for good. The principles of God can take your business from one level of glory to the next level of glory. The principles of God, when you operate in the principles of God, you can defy the law of nature you can defy any form of laws when you operate in the principles of god you become supernatural you become different you become everything that is completely normal they tell me revival is taking place but you forgot your spiritual obligation you do you know how many churches are going to close how does the church operate the church operates when people come together. They put their spiritual, mental, and physical resources together. One of the end time principles and doctrine is selfishness. The Bible makes it clear that in the end times, men will become cold. The love of men will wax so cold. Men will become lovers of themselves as a shepherd of God's people I took time to call people and to encourage them during the pandemic 
When was the last time you called someone to ask? You are so driven by fear. But let me tell you how it works. Statistics shows that the people who got the least infection were the health workers who gave their lives for the cause. The Bible makes it clear that he who gives his life, he who loses his life will find it. But he who keeps his life will lose it. I live in a very expensive place, subdivision. And news kept coming. Men and women are dying. I began to ask myself, why are they dying? They're dying because they are afraid. Because they locked themselves at home. And they, they gave all the dangerous assignment to the mates. Their mates never died. But they kept dying. Because you cannot change the laws of God. I know it is okay to carry out government res regulations, put on your face mask, do all the things that the medical expert tells you to do. But it is not okay for you not to fulfill your destiny. You can say, I'm a believer. You know how to go to the supermarket. You know how to go to the mall. You know how to go to the bank. You know how to go to your place of work to receive your salary. But you don't know how to spend time in God's presence. You're messing around with your destiny. Let me tell you something about destiny. Anytime in the spirit realm, you put an end to your physical existence, your purpose on earth, you are bound to die. The day you stop doing what God has called you to do, you are inviting death into your life. Paul went through many things in his life. Death could not claim him because he was not finished. I, I know that there is threat everywhere, but as long as God has called me for this season to prophesy for this season, I won't stop until Africa, until Asia, until Europe, until South America, until North America, until Australia are set free. I will not stop preaching until righteousness flows like an ever-flowing stream. Some of you say you want to be leaders. A leader is the last man to leave the boat. When we came, I told my other workers, I said, you have to be protected. But I'm the shepherd. If God can keep me, then my faith is useless. Because I must do what God has called me to do. And my duty is to give you life through the word of God. Because many people are dying of depression. That's not the will of God. Many people are doing things that are crazy. That's not the will of God. As long as you are on earth, you need the word of God to change, to be transformed, to be successful, to be productive, to do all the things that God has called you to do. God has not given us a spirit of fear. If he comes and, and tries to define your life, kick it out of your life. Because when fear rules your life, you lose power, you lose love, and you lose the soundness of mind. Fearful people don't think straight. They're paranoid. They think death is everywhere. Death is everywhere, but there's also life everywhere. Choose the one you want to take. I choose to live. I choose to prosper. I choose to be in divine health. I choose to do the things that God has called me to do. Don't tell me that God has stopped healing. Jesus Christ of yesterday, today, and forever is the same. Before the pandemic lockdown, the woman came. Sister Vicky brought a woman to the church. She had stage 4 cancer. All I did was to tell her about the word of God. And she had tumors all over her body, including her brain. One simple prayer of faith. And twice she came to church. Before there was a lockdown, she gave her life to Jesus Christ. By the time she went for test, recently, not one trace of the cancer. Don't tell me that Jesus Christ does not heal. In those days, the, the shadow of Peter alone walked through places and people were made whole. 
I believe the Bible tells me that where the spirit of the sovereign God is, there is liberty. Whatever sickness you came with this Lord's day, I declare healing upon you right now in the name of Jesus. From your mind, from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, I declare healing. Let healing come like an ever flowing stream in the mighty name of Jesus. Let chains be broken. Let every faulty mindset be replaced by the power of the Holy Spirit. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. The Bible tells me in the book of First John chapter 4 verse 18, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. And the Bible tells me in the book of John chapter 14 verse 27, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. A glorious destiny is the product of a disciplined mind. Every man is the product of his dominant thoughts, the ability to achieve great things and influence the world positively will be determined by your capacity to harness the power of positive thinking. Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Every man in this place, every woman in this place, you are not a product of accident. The things you see today were the outcome of the things you desired yesterday, knowingly or unknowingly. The mind is like a field. Whatever seed you sow will spring forth. Now you're going to say this is too much. This is too much to take. But this is the word of God. You can't rise above what you think. Every man is a product of his dominant thought. No matter how much they teach you righteousness, if your mind does not embrace righteousness, you won't live a righteous life. No matter how much they teach you about God's grace, if your mind does not embrace God's grace, you won't live a life of grace. No matter how much they teach you about power, even if they lay hands on you, if your mind does not conceive the concept of power, you will never ever walk in the power of God. The Bible tells me that the kingdom of God is not in words but in power. The whole world is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. I believe in my spirit that the sons of God will manifest in every spectrum of life. The biggest physical structure on earth is the mountain. It is the tallest, it is the biggest, it is the most stable. And when Jesus talked about faith, when he gave the equation of what faith is, he said, if your faith is as small as a mustard seed, and you say to this mountain, be thou removed, and you don't doubt in your heart, it shall be done. What is your mountain? The limitation you have in your marriage, the limitation you have in your business, the limitation you have in your life is the limitation you have in your mind. The biggest obstacle to your success is not even the devil, it is you. Because the mind functions according to the dictates of what you give. The human mind is one. But the mind is broken into two separate components. The, the conscious mind and the subconscious mind. The conscious mind makes decisions, processes things, looks at values, and it sends it to the subconscious mind. And the subconscious mind begins to give back to you in a multiplied manner what you've given to it. Uh, but, but, but Bishop, I'm, I'm struggling. I'm struggling. This, this temptation is too big. I'm struggling. It's because your mind is full of crap. Take away the pornography from your mind. Delete the memories that you've put in your mind. We are sons of light. We are sons of God. 
When I travel to a place, sometimes I sit in my plane and I'm laughing and people think I'm crazy. I, I look at nations of the world and I tell them, the kingdom of God has come. You want to see God? You see me, you've seen God. Because I am the representative of God. I carry the power of God. I carry the wisdom of God. I carry the mind of God. There is no limitation in my life because my God is not limited. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens things me. The way you think is the greatest obstacle to your success. I'm broke because your mind is broke. I am rich because your mind is rich. Do you know how powerful the mind is? I've done this many times. I tell my mind, the conscious mind tells my subconscious, even when I'm tired, I'm going to wake up by 2 a.m. Exactly 2 a.m., my whole body wakes up. You are sick because your mind tells you, I'm going to be sick today. And so the subconscious mind sends the necessary triggers to your body, and you fall sick. You, you say, if I sleep in a certain way, I'm going to have stiff neck. It will come to pass. You say, if I eat certain food, I'm going to be sick. It will come to pass. Don't kill yourself. If the devil cannot kill you, he'll look for you to kill you. Because of the things you're putting in your mind. Some of you are so conscious of what the devil is doing. How about the glory of God? How about the Shekinah glory of God? Do you still believe that there are men of God who can enter a place and the presence of God comes? Some of you are hiding at home. Because, let me tell you something. Sometimes the people who can destroy your faith are your family members. Be careful. Be careful. Please do not allow someone to plant their fears into your life because they'll be destroying what God has programmed you to do. Be careful, be careful, be careful. Tell them, be careful for nothing. Time does not wait for anyone. Any moment you spend at home not doing what God has called you to do is a victory march for the devil. I did not exist. I do not exist to be married. I do not exist to live in a house and hide somewhere. I was born for this to take the word of God to all nations of the world. Whether there is a virus, whether there is crisis, whether there is pain, I will fulfill my assignment. I will move from glory to glory. I will do what God has called me to do. Some of you, you allow situations to define you. I can't do this because I can't do... If you are so afraid... Why do you go to the bank? Why do you go do your business? Just to spend less than one hour, 30 minutes in God's presence is too dangerous. The places you go to, they don't have the protection we put upon this place. We took all our, everything. I can tell you that this is one of the most protected, medically protected buildings in the Republic of the Philippines. But you can go to other places because... The Bible tells me where your treasure is. That is where your heart is. Thank God for what we've gone through because it has revealed the true soldiers of God. One of the things I told myself, I said when a general makes a call to the soldiers to come, the ones that respond are the ones who are set to be part of God's army. I told myself, I said, today we will define the true leaders of team. Because you must live for a cause bigger than self. I'm an African. I traveled many miles to be in your midst. I'm not afraid. If you are so afraid in your own country that you can't do anything for yourself, that means something is so wrong. 
before they built cathedral, any church built a cathedral in the Philippines. Philippines, many of the Christians were afraid. It's not been done. It's not been done. Don't tell me it can't be done. With God, to him that believes, all things are possible. We did it in Lucena. We came here. We did it. I just want to pay tribute to all those that God used to make the project possible. Don't ever limit yourself. Whatever you are, you're a product of what you have put in your mind. Luke chapter 6 verse 45. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of his heart, his mouth speaks. So whatever you speak is either dictated by faith or fear. Romans chapter 8, verse 6 to 7. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. Every impossible feat ever achieved by extraordinary men and women originated from imagination. Imagination is the catalyst of inventions. How do you think? What is your imagination? Hear what God said concerning people who were ready to build one of the biggest towers in, in, in their lifetime. Genesis chapter 11 verse 6. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one. And they have all one language, and this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. If you can imagine it, nothing can stop you. What is your imagination? My imagination, my imagination is the imagination of righteousness. I believe I'm righteous because the word of God says I'm righteous. I believe I'm righteous because I'm the righteousness of Jesus Christ. That means my self-esteem is tied to the reality of what I believe. Some of you are in a mess and you're waiting for your pastor to come. There are times that the pastor won't be around, but you have to think right. The prodigal son told, told himself, a pastor didn't talk to him. A counselor didn't talk to him. He saw that he was in a mess. He told himself, I will arise. Talk to yourself. The woman who had the issue of blood, who had the issue of blood, she had, her mind was, was channeled towards the medical sciences. Then suddenly she realized who she was, a daughter of Abraham. She told herself, if I can touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. Please. Your mind is running far and wide. Your mind is tied to rubbish. I'm appealing to the children of God, the sons of God. Bring back your mind to the original state. Bring back your mind to the concept of righteousness. Bring your mind to the realm of righteousness. Bring your mind to the realm of holiness. Bring your mind to the realm of power. Bring your mind to Psalm 91 that tells me, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow. Of the Almighty. Stop this nonsense. If you believe God has given you long life, begin to live the long life. Stop this nonsense. If you believe that God is protecting you, let Him protect you. The Hebrew boy said, O oh king, we will not bow. Even if God does not protect us. You know, Christians have turned out to be some of the most hypocritical people in the world. I have faith, but you talk in a fearful manner. That's not faith. That's not faith. That's not faith. That's not faith. Look for those who are sick with the virus. We will pray for them and they will be healed. That's faith. You shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I am not going to allow any situation to define me. 
I know my purpose on earth and I will not stop until righteousness is established. Make up your mind. How do you even feel? Four or five months, you didn't go to church. You didn't even bother to send your contribution. You don't care whether the church folds on. How do you feel? What type of mind is that? That's not the mind of God. How do you feel? Four or five months, you can't even relate with anybody. And you lock yourself somewhere. You want to succeed. How do you feel? If this thing continues for 10 years, are you going to be locked up at home? If the medical sciences can't solve the problems, then the church of God must solve this problem. We must banish the coronavirus out of the Philippines, out of America, out of Africa, out of Europe, all parts of the world. We have the power. We didn't start this fight, but we have to end it. A virus that tells your children you can't go to school. Yes, boss. Don't you have the dignity? Don't you have the dignity to say enough is enough? You can't be passive and have the mind of God. The mind of God is aggressive. The mind of God makes you bold. Those that know that God shall be bold, they shall be strong, and they shall do great exploits. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. Genesis 13, 15. For all the land which you see are given to you and your descendants forever. It was impossible for this man to see all the land. So what was God indicating? That means as far as you can imagine. What do you see? A mind opposed to the truth is doomed to fail. We're created to think and talk like God with the power to achieve big things. The Bible tells me in the book of Ephesians chapter 4 verse 20 to 24 that you put off tell your neighbor say put off that you put off concerning your former conduct the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of your mind where do you get your renewal renewal starts from the mind there are people who are saved, but they are still stuck in the past because their minds are not renewed. You must stop thinking carnal thoughts. Jesus told Peter to step on water. Peter had to switch into the auto mode. He switched from the mental realm. He switched from the physical realm and switched into the spiritual realm. Because only a spiritual mind can comprehend that it is possible to walk on water. If God tells you to do spiritual things, don't reason with God with your carnal mind. Because it will end up in disobedience. The Bible tells us the deep calls unto the deep. That means, if the deep is calling on to you, you must respond by placing yourself in the deep. John said in the book of Revelation, and the Spirit of God said to me, come up here and I'll show you things. You want to see impossible inventions that's never been made? Don't reason it out. John said, immediately, I was in the spirit. That which is spirit, is spirit. Because the Bible tells me that the time has come. And now is where the true worshipers must worship God in spirit and in truth. Some of you say you are believers. And when God speaks to you as a spirit, you answer as a carnal man. That's where you have the problem. 
Faith is not carnal. Faith does not operate in the realm of your reasoning. Faith operates in the realm of impossibilities. Faith operates in the realm of infinity. Where you can't reason it, you just act. If God tells you to do it and you hesitate, that's not faith. That's fear. Faith has no hesitation. If God tells you to jump, jump. Is this too deep for you? So at the end of the day, the reason you possess this body, because man is a spirit who has a soul and dwells in a body. You use your physical body to relate in the earth realm. You use your intellectual capacity to relate in the mental realm. But what you use to relate with God is your spirit. Spirits don't feel. Spirits do not say, oh, I, I can't, I don't feel like. Paul, when he was put in prison, in one of the worst prisons, when he wrote, rejoice, I say rejoice. It was not because he had the best rejoicing circumstances. You must see what your eyes, your natural eyes cannot see. That you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt, according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. That is the type of person you are, righteous and holy. Some of you, you tell me when I, when I push you, when I encourage you to be righteous, you tell me, Bishop, I have a lot of flaws. Does it mean I'm not this? I'm not. That's nonsense. Why are you? There are two ways of thinking. Why, are your, why is your mind tied to naked women, pornography? Why can't you discipline yourself? Why is your mind tied to unforgiveness? Why is your mind, tie, your mind tied to, to bitterness? There are many reasons that you can be oppressed and depressed. And there are, so, there are also many reasons why you should rejoice. It all depends on the quality of choices that you're willing to make. Philippians 2, 5. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. You see they use the word past tense. Which was also, it simply means Jesus came through this planet. He lives like a man. And when he lived like a man, what was his mindset? His mindset was different. He didn't think like a man, yet he lived like a man. He lived like a man, but he thought like God. He lived like a man, he acted like God. He lived like a man. He did the things only God could do because his mind was connected to the mind of God. And I is telling us, I've left you a template. Although you are in the world, you are not of the world. He that comes from above is above all. Romans 7, 23. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind. And bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. The law of sin is in your body. But the law of righteousness is in your mind. Your body was designed to seek pleasure. But you can't allow your body to define you. You must tell your body that I am righteous. This vessel is righteous. This vessel is whole. This vessel is not sick. This vessel is beautiful. This vessel is handsome. This vessel is whole. And it shall be established. Colossians 3, 1 to 2. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above. Where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God, set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. The reason you are going through temptation is because your mind is always on the wrong things. 
Playboy magazine. Pornography movies. Horror movies. Kiss Miss. Oh, this one died. This one died. Set your mind on things above. Set your mind on things that are productive. Your mind is wandering. Hold it captive. Take it back to God. The mind is powerful and controls our actions. It incubates imaginations with unequal capacity to create reality through the law of attraction. This can be negative or positive depending on the input. We can create peace or trouble through meditation. A man who has the mindset of poverty, even if you build him a palace and you place him there, is the palace is going to be turned into a slum because his mind does not possess the capacity to keep it. What did God tell Adam? Turn the planet and keep it. If your mind cannot turn something, if your mind cannot build something, your mind will be unable to keep it. Have you noticed that you give to people who are so poor, so broke, you give them the best cars. Two years later, that car, you can't even recognize it because their minds. It is not the product we should give to them. The best gift you can give to people who are broke is not money. Feed their minds with the word of God. Elevate their minds to the place, to the place, to the level where they can appreciate God's supernatural ability to create wealth. A woman who is damaged, give her a castle, give her a car, take her to the best destinations in the world. They'll tell you, I am still not happy. Because it is not the property that's making them unhappy, it is the state of the minds. Some people who are addicted to sickness, they tell you, every month I'm going to be sick. Whether you like it or not, every month, they have a special date. When it's 26th or 27th, they are sick because their minds made it that way. Your mind is a fertile soil. Whatever seed you plant, we produce. Today, whatever God has not planted in your mind, I uproot it in the name of Jesus. Let the peace of God live in you. When you begin to excuse everything that is negative, nothing good will come to you. You don't understand, Bishop. You don't understand. You don't understand how my body feels. I don't understand and I don't want to understand. Because you're teaching me stupid things. The only thing I understand is that God created me in his own image. And if God can step on waters, I can. The only thing I can understand is if Jesus raised the dead and he said, greater things shall you do, I can. The only thing I can understand is if Jesus multiplied a few loaves and a few fishes to feed thousands, I can. Choose what you want to believe. You have your cell phone every day, you, every month, of every week you update the software. Update your software, your spiritual software. Put in things, whatever things that are good, whatever things that are just, whatever things that are, that are holy. Dwell on those things. If this message is offending you, then you are in the wrong place. God did not raise me to raise midgets. He raised me to raise champions. Let every tree produce. So my spiritual daughters and my spiritual sons, 
my biological daughters and all those I have adopted must be like me. They must be better than me. Go home and tell your wife and tell your husband and tell your children that today I'm a changed man. Bishop Tony flogged my mind and I'm coming home changed. I want you to be positively angry. I want to provoke you. If you can't believe what the Bible tells you, then stop being a Christian. Don't make a mockery of the faith. It's then not a cause. Look at what a man who was so wealthy entertained in his mind. And look at what happened to him. Job chapter 3 verse 25 to 26. For the thing I greatly feared has come upon me. And what I dreaded has happened to me. I am not at ease, nor am I quiet. I have no rest for trouble comes. So who created the trouble? He created the trouble. He was the richest man. He was protected, but he was still afraid. This is what fear does. If you think you are afraid and you think you're protecting your life, no. Fear will lead to your death. Fear will bring sickness. Fear will bring failure. Fear will bring everything that is terrible. Fear will take away your peace. With faith, you have nothing to lose. With fear, you have everything to lose. Joshua 1.8 This book of the Lord shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you make your way prosperous, then you have good success. Some of you can spend so much time on social media, but you can't meditate on the word of God day and night. Why do you meditate on the word of God day and night? Because the words that you meditate on, they are spirit and they are life. The more you meditate on the word of God concerning faith, the more you become big in your faith walk with God. The more you meditate on God's healing, the more immune you are to sickness, the more you begin to walk in divine health. I believe that divine health is better than divine healing. Divine healing is when you fall sick and you are healed. But divine health is operating in the health of God. My children operate in divine health. They never fall sick. Because when they were in the, in the mother's womb, I spoke to their spirit and I said, this planet is a very funny place. God has called you to dominate it, but you are not permitted to be sick. And they've never been sick. Well, sometimes I almost fall sick because of stress. And I'm teaching myself not to stress myself again. You know what stresses me? When I go up and I discover that the building is not done. <laughs> when I go up and I discover that certain things. So I told myself that I'm not going to come to church to see these things because once I see them, like Nehemiah, when he saw the broken wall of Jerusalem, he wept. If you want to make me weep, show me the broken state of God's house. Hebrews 11, 1. Now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Jesus preached and taught true parables partly because he wanted to activate and expand both the mental and spiritual potentials of the people to the realm of infinite possibilities. The breath of God in me defines my purpose, not the threat of a virus. Do not allow fear to torment your existence through the wrong mindset. I'll give you five steps to positive thinking. One, surrender your life to God. The unregenerated human soul is full of sinful and wicked thoughts. Only the redemptive power of God can correct it. Jeremiah 17, 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Titus 3, 5. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. Psalm 51 verse 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. 
That should be our prayer. Two, renew your mind. A renewed and sanctified mind possesses an infinite productive capability to achieve mighty objectives. Romans 12, 1 to 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Three, resist negative thoughts detrimental to your purpose. Second Corinthians 10, 5. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Even if your mind is telling you something that's not in the will of God, what do you do? Capture, hold captive that thought. Chain it and imprison it. And say, no, you cannot be part of my thought process. Four, focus on godly objectives. Let God and your divine objectives occupy your thoughts. What occupies your thoughts? You're worried about family. You're worried about many things. But that's the wrong thought. Seek first the kingdom of God. Matthew 6, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and every other thing shall be added unto you. So let God and your divine objectives occupy your thoughts. First Chronicles 29 verse 3. Moreover, because I have set my affection on the house of my God, I have given to the house of my God over and above all that I have prepared for the holy house my own special treasure of gold and silver. This is the right mindset. Psalm 94 verse 19. In the multitude of my thoughts within me, thy comforts delight my soul. So when you comfort yourself with the thoughts of, of God, your soul will find comfort. Finally, anticipate the reward of your labor. Abraham was a rich man, but Abraham's concerns were not earthly. He lived in tents. He looked forward to a city whose foundation was made by God, whose maker was God. We are not going to be on this planet this season forever. So think of the bigger picture. I can't wait someday when I stand before God and he tells me, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. And for some of you who love this earth, you love this earth a lot. Don't worry, we are going to come back and we are going to rule here for 1,000 years. Don't you know that? And after that, when the devil has been chained, then God is going to give us a new heaven and a new earth. And this is going to be the new heaven, the, 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 the new place, the new earth that God has created for us. But it's not going to be this messed up planet. It's going to be devoid of virus. There's not going to be virus. There's not going to be sickness. No one is going to grow old. So you don't need to go to South Salon to do your hair. <laughs> and you guess what? For some of us who lost our hair due to global warming, we're going to have our hair. The first thing when I meet God, probably one of the first things, can you just fix this thing? This thing is embarrassing me. <laughs> Hallelujah. So God is going to give us transformed bodies, glorious bodies. That body, you won't say there is, you know, you, you won't have the, the pharmaceutical companies there. No Panadol, no pain, no cancer treatment. Every, the, the, the fruit we eat, the things we eat will give us life. I am looking forward where there shall be no more crying, no more tears, no more pain. That should be your goal. Save towards that project. Save towards project eternity. Spend towards project eternity. That is what gives me joy. Our battle 
is not going to be in vain. For all of you who have given, don't stop giving. Don't be wearing good things. One day my God and your God will look at you and say, thank you. Well done. Well done. That's a good thing. That's the good news. When you get back home, stop looking at the news items, how many people died. Start looking at reading the Bible and seeing how many people lived. Hallelujah. So five, anticipate the reward of your labor. Hebrews 12, 1 to 2. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Hallelujah. 